Hello, I'm Victoria and I run a company called Health at Hand. I'm going to demonstrate Swedish massage today, which normally takes one hour. It is good for boosting circulation, lymph drainage, to release toxins and to thoroughly relax the mind and the body. Those who should not have Swedish massage are perhaps the very elderly, the frail, those with very high blood pressure or recuperating from recent operations or those pregnant ladies who would find it difficult lying on their stomachs. The purpose of today's program is to give you an insight into what happens when visiting a therapist and to give you a few hints to be able to massage yourself or your family. When finding a good therapist, make sure they are qualified and insured. They should make you feel welcome and give you a thorough consultation before treatment and you should be able to get on with them. I hope you enjoy the program and find it helpful. I'm going to demonstrate the Swedish massage, always working at the front of the body, first of all, starting on the right leg, using plenty of oil to massage upwards, firm massage upwards towards the heart. This movement is called effleurage, and pushing any toxins down the quadriceps upwards towards the lymph node in the groin area called the inguinal lymph node and there again using my knuckles to push any toxins upwards along the hamstrings at the back of the thigh nice tug to stretch the leg keeping the client completely covered apart from the limb being massaged. When massaging any of the joints, it just feels the most wonderful feeling, like you're really warming the area and at the same time draining the area of any toxins. using my thumbs here to push any toxins from this area and then down to the lymph node at the back of the knee. Moving on to the ankle, giving the joint a nice mobility circling there, sometimes feeling them crunch at the same time. And then smoothing out all the toxins around the joint. It's a lovely feeling when you have your ankles massaged. And then coming up the foot, doing my petrissage movement between the metatarsal bones which connect the toes and along the feet and then pushing all those toxins away. That can be quite a, a uh, painful massage for the client, but you need to get rid of those toxins. And then coming down, massaging behind the foot here. It's a beautiful movement. Nice and firm and stretching the toes. That movement will massage all the nerve endings and in line with the metamorphic technique and reflexology, it will massage all the energy lines. Lovely feeling of stretching up the foot. And then massaging each toe individually. So 
so it's a massage down, a nice mobility circle, and then a gentle tug. Nothing too much. You don't want to hear a click unless the toe wants to click. Now moving on to the left leg. Again, only revealing the limb that needs to be massaged. Introducing myself to this side of the body with the effleurage movement, using plenty of oil, otherwise the skin tends to stick to the hand and it will rub too much, too much friction. And as you can see, a nice pull as you come down. So firm upwards, lightly down, and then a little tug. Moving the knee up. And again, massaging down the quadricep. And along the back of the hamstrings, always working outwards towards the buttock. Working on the left knee. Lovely movement, pushing all the toxins away and down. It's strange, sometimes you can feel crystals around one knee and not around the other. Maybe someone has arthritis or another joint problem. And that just feels wonderful when it's being massaged. You can do a great deal of help around joints. circular motion around the ankle, a nice tug and move the crystals again downwards to the back of the ankle. Pushing all the toxins down through the metatarsal bones. And then the back of the foot. And nice stretch. Wonderful feeling. The secret here around the foot is not to be what I'd call a wet lettuce, which is no gentle movements. You need to be nice and firm Otherwise, people can be very ticklish around the sole and the toes. You just need to be nice and firm so that the person knows where you are all the time. And a nice stretch down the back of the foot. Lovely. Having finished both legs, I can now cover them up, make them feel nice and warm and secure, and also get a handy pillow, raise the knees, and put the pillow under the thighs and knees, knees down, and that makes the client feel very secure and it releases any pressure from the lower back. How does that feel? Good. All right. Okay, now moving on to the stomach area. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see again, only the area of body being massaged is, is revealed. Just getting some oil. Warming the oil in my hands and introducing my hands to the body. One note to make about all of these massage areas is that you'll notice that I never remove my hands from the body. I'm always in contact. One hand is always in contact. Apart from when I finish an area or if I have to adjust towels. The stomach area demonstrates why a therapist needs to know anatomy and physiology in depth. The reason is with the stomach is obviously the colon works from this area in an upside down horseshoe round and down here out to the bowel. There's an iliosacral valve here which works from the intestines and the iliosacral valve can get blocked so this is a nice area just the massage in this direction, never in the other direction. So upwards here from the small intestines to the colon. And then what I'm doing is following the colon round. It's a nice movement, very relaxing. It can relieve a lot of stomach upset in children or adults. And then doing some back sweeps and down the sides and a nice pull up over the hips. 